Well, welcome in. Been a while since the last Backyard Baseball 2001 games. And this time we have a Backyard Baseball Week type tripled header. A few right here. We're going to start in Sandy Flats, which is a bit of an inconspicuous place to start. To start the triple header, but here we go. Sunny Day and Vinny the Gooch in Sandy Flats. Welcome to the most fun you'll have all day. This is Sunny Day and Vinny the Gooch, live at Sandy Flats, where the running is slow and the balls bounce low. Today we'll see a close matchup between the Arizona Diamondbacks and the Chicago White Sox. You all seem like a rowdy bunch of fans. I expect to see plenty of waves, signs, and stupid looking hats out of you people. So let's get on with the ball game. Diamondbacks, White Sox, Sandy Flats, get it going. Okay, let's play ball. Pitching today is Randy Johnson. There's nothing scarier than facing a Randy Johnson fastball. It makes me sweat just thinking about it. Here comes Mr. Snappy. Vicky Kawaguchi is the first. So the leadoff is Vicky at catcher. So what we're gonna see here when. This game gets to its fifth inning. We'll go and transition into game two of the triple header. And we'll come back at about inning seven or eight. That's when we'll go back to game one. It's still unknown at this point with, well, when the transition from game two to game three will happen. Uh, it's thought that... Well, we'll get to that when we see it. Either way, Sandy Flats, obviously, like I said, not a lot of offense in this ballpark, mainly because it's tough to walk through sand. It's also one of the biggest fields of play in backyard baseball, as there is a shallow left field as Vi uh, Vicky does strike out for the first strikeout, Randy Johnson. Getting Vicky in four. Left field is relatively shallow, but center field and right field is a vast wasteland. And if a ball drops there, that can probably counteract how bad the offense is in this ballpark. Angela, orange background here. Batting, eight to a ten, running, four to a nine, fielding, one to a seven. And that would imply that Tony's on the other team. Whenever those two are on opposite teams, you know what's going on. For Tony, batting 7 to a 9, running 6 to a 9, pitching 3 to an 8, fielding 7 to a 10. Tony once in the back here in baseball history got a shutout from a uh, orange background as Angela hits a line drive that goes straight to Randy Johnson for the second out. Mikey coming up here. Two outs in the top one as Johnson pitches that one. That's a flubber over the plate as Reese gets that one. So a one, two, three as Reese comes up at bat. Tony's on deck. And Juan Gonzalez is in the hole. Angela Del Vecchio up to pitch now. Like her brother Tony? Sugar Pop has a pretty solid spitball, especially on days ending with Y. Game back in 2017, Angela pitched a complete game, but it was a loss. It was a 3-2 loss, if I'm not mistaken. She pitched very well. Ernie had an eight-inning win. Not a, lot of, not a lot of offense on her side. Reese here comes in. We've still got the classic stats from when stat keeping was a thing with that baseball 2001. Reese hit a 270, 37 to 137. Never got a triple or a home run. He is one of two backyard kids who have never hit a home run in the backyard baseball 2001 era. The other being Billy Jean. As Reese takes a 1-2 and strikes out. So Angela 
You give it your best shot. Getting Reese in four pitches. Stupid bat. Mirroring what Randy Johnson did in the top one. Next up, sibling rivalry here. Tony DeVecchio comes up. He hits a 311, 38 of 122. And a couple of home runs. As this one's hit well into center, and like we said, center field is a vast wasteland. It'll be picked up by Burnitz. Lisa's gonna get to this one. Lisa throws the second, and that's a triple for Tony. So round one, they're going to Tony as he gets a triple off of his sister. Juan Gonzalez, orange background, take a look at him. His batting out from a 9 to a 10. Pitching 4 to a 6, fielding 9 to a 10 as he is playing right field. So, Angela already in a rut as she allows a triple to Tony on that one. This one is swinging a miss. Juan Gonzalez hitting a... He had hit a 351, 39 of 111. As this one's hit well to the same place Tony hit it, it will likely be a ground rule double, which will mean it's an RBI double. Tony will score, and the White Sox already giving this game its first run. Ronnie, he hit a 287, 35 of 122, but neither of those hits are home runs. He's got great power, but not much contact and not much control, as you can see there. A lot of his really good hits go foul and he ends up striking out really from just fouling out or fouling too much. Count one and one. And that's a ball too. A run already in the first inning as Ronnie now Facing a 3-1 count. I don't want to walk Ronnie here if you're Angela. And that is what she will do. Ronnie, surprisingly, did have the most walks out of all backyard kids. As far as raw number, it a walk basically every two games. So another orange background, this time for Sydney Weber, her batting 5 to an 8, running 7 to an 8, fielding 3 to an 8, and with that, in the same game, we have Tony and Angela on different teams, and we have Ashley and Sydney on the same team. A lot of games don't really go where we see the relations happen. This one a grounder, but it's going to go foul. Actually worked out there, because if that stayed in play, then could have likely been a double play. Sydney stancing toward a double play as she will ground it nearly the same way. Vicky to third. Ripken Jr. to second. Oh, and Mikey couldn't get the catch. That would have been an offensive power-up, had Mikey gotten that one. Oh, well, evidently it's not Rifkin Jr. at third, ba third base there. I'll correct myself once we get back into the uh, other view. Chipper Jones, excuse me. Angela to end the inning, yes! So set that, Larkin on deck, Jones in the hole, the White Sox. Started off pretty well with three hits and the run. Angela had lost one quarter of her stamina in just one inning. 
This one hit well by Sosa. And this is picked up by Weber Twin, who I don't know is who it is yet. That's a single for Sosa. Larkin. The next batter. Johnson only had six pitches in the, in the first inning as Sosa will look to steal and doesn't get it. Reese may not have the arm strength, but Sandy Flats is very forgiving to players who do not have arm strength. And typically, not a lot of the backyard kids that play catcher have good arm strength. They've got good catching ability, but they don't have great arm strength. Count two and one for Barry Larkin. And an early swing strike. Barry Larkin in the back of baseball 2001 era. He hits a 430. He was 68 of 158. Six of those hits, home runs, always a steel threat as well. So on the left hook, it's grounded. This is Ripken Jr. And Tony gets it at first for the second down. Next up is Chipper Jones. He had among one of the best batting averages of the pros. 52 of 111, hitting a 468 with strike. eight home runs. You call that a strike? He also had one of the lower strikeout rates of all the players in the league. As I say that, swings at a bad pitch, strike two. Johnson looking to end the top second with a nine pitch inning. Can he do it right here? It's ground. A bouncing ball. Ooh, ooh. Gonna be chasing this one. Reese flubs the throw. The best throw we've ever seen and Great shot the first. that's a single off the possible error by Reese right there. On first, two outs. Those in between grounders will do it at times. And Sandy Flats, you gotta make the fielders run a lot to try to catch that ball. Lisa's up next. She hits a line drive into shallow left field. And the Weber Twins connect for out number three, the top second. Johnson at bat. Ashley on deck. Garcia par and hole in the hole for the White Sox. Randy Johnson, as you may expect, he had the third least batting average, or worst batting average, of all of the pros, 190, 22 of 116. He did have three home runs though, and he just draw 15 walks, which makes sense for a pitcher, obviously. Johnson's got power, but he'll rarely get to it, but when you, whenever you see it happen, it's a good sight. Count one and two for Johnson. Strike three. Another issue is that he's really tall. He's got a really huge strike zone. So Johnson will strike out for out number one. That's number two for Angela. Next up is Ashley. So Ashley's at center base. Sydney, uh, second base. Sydney's in left field. Sydney slightly better as a hitter than, uh, well, Ashley slightly worse as a batter than her sister, Sydney. Ashley hitting a 324, Sydney a 339. A grounder in between. Angela will pick it up. Angela will coast at the first, and that just barely missed. So Ashley at first base as Nomar Garcia Parra comes up. Garcia Parra 
one of the highest hit marks of all the pros. 60 for 146. Stealing second is Ashley. She'll get there as Vicky not able to get it there. Usually, the opportunities will be pretty tough in Sandy Flats, but again, with a pitcher that has, oh, a catcher rather, that has good arm strength. Angela, usually not very good at covering uh, steals, but in this one, her throw power is a bit better since we've got Tony on the other team. That's ball three. Garcia Parra, he drew the most walks of all the pros. 18. That's a strike, though, just slightly in the uh, strike zone. Garcia Parra, 12 of the 60 hits, home runs. The 4 11, another crazy ball, but Garcia Parra will walk. Angela so far not really having a game at it. As we'll see Reese again. The leadoff hitter. He had the leadoff strikeout. So in the fifth inning we'll move to Cement Gardens for the second game of the triple header. And we'll come back to this either in the 7th or 8th inning, as far as I can figure. Depending on how close the game is as well. This one hit well by Reese to shallow left center, and it's not caught. Larkin to third, Jones to second, double play! So, didn't matter. Jacinda, Bat, Burnett's on deck. Vicky in the hole as the Diamondbacks now have an offensive power up from the double play. Great throw by Chipper Jones. We've got Josinda. She's got the best anti-strikeout rate of all backyard kids. Just 15 strikeouts in 37 games played. Hitting a 403, but of her 64 hits, 53 were singles. As she will get out there. Here's Burnett. He's got an orange background. A lot of happy kids out here to play on July 4th. Batting 7 to a 9, pitching 4 to a 5, fielding 7 to a 10. Randy Johnson, all of his stamina. Angela has just a quarter. On oh, no, a late swing for a strike. Burnett's at a 269, 32 of 119, with just four home runs. This one a grounder to Garcia Parra. Easy play. Most beautiful play in baseball. That involves a throw to first. Grounder to the shortstop. Vicky struck out in her first at bat in the first inning. So swing and miss. Vicky, despite a 1 out of 10 batting rating and an awful swing, hit a 280. Mainly because when she can make contact, she usually will get on base. 25 of her 33 hits and 118 at bats or singles. Strike two. Think I felt the wind from that pitch all the way over here. O2 counts for Vicky looking to end the top half of the inning. And we're not going to see it yet. Ball one. And the count is one and two. 
This one above the strike zone. Vicky looking to try to draw a walk. She walks about once every two games. It's a pretty good rate. And early swing strike, so Vicky will strike out for the second time. And second strikeout for Johnson, both against Vicky. As Tony will come back on bat. Gonzalez on deck, Ronnie in the hole. Tony so far, ironically for Angela, is the only player. Well, who is the guy? to get a run in this one. This one above the strike zone, ball one. Tony took round one. Not sure how long Angela's gonna really last on the mound here. Since in the top half she had about a quarter of her stamina, which is, for the third inning, pretty bad. Late swing strike there by Tony. This one just a grounder. Vicky should make the play. And she does. To Josinda. For round number one. Juan Gonzalez. He... Was the only RBI in the first inning. This one well out of the strike zone for a ball. We're already just over an inning away from seeing the game in Cement Gardens. Still too early to see whether or not we'll see any offense in this one. one nothing White Sox over the Diamondbacks in this one. And a ball too. Strike two. What are you waiting for? To help the defense in this one, the White Sox, or the Diamondbacks, excuse me, they've got a pretty good infield uh, throwing strength with Lark and Mikey in the middle as Gonzalez strikes out. Ronnie's next up. He walked in his first at uh, first plate appearance. Down the strike. That kid was frozen. And the count is 0-1. I'm saying Larkin, Mikey, and Chipper Jones in the infield. If Angela can somehow recover her stamina, then the Diamondbacks should be pretty good as far as balls hitting the infield. But that may be a huge doubt. That'll depend on whether or not she gets 110% juice power up as Ronnie swings and misses for a strike too. This one well up the strike zone, and Ronnie looking to get his second uh, walk of the game. And this one is a pop fly. Larkin doesn't. Oh, on the second attempt, he does. Three innings down. Angela at bat. Mikey on deck. And. I think I saw Chipper Jones in the hole. Angela is 0 for 1. No way was that a strike. 0 and 1. So far in the rivalry, Tony's 1 for 2. Angela will see if she can equalize her brother here. Usually for her it's a home run or bust, but in this one, depending on what her stamina is, she can probably make a play. And that one, he saw that, but they call it a foul, count one and two. 
So Johnson only had 25 pitches through three innings. But we're already going to see a fifth pitch of this at bat. Johnson up to throw. Another left hook. This one is line driven into shallow center field. Ronnie will throw it himself to first. Tony will get it and run back to first for the out. That may show the fatigue level there of uh, Angela as despite her running rating going up to I believe a 9. Unable to get to first base as Mikey takes a strike there. Mikey had a 415, he's one of the slowest players in the league, but 68 of 164, that is a 415 as that one's hit the center field. Garcia Parra, not going to be enough. It's a single. As Sydney and Garcia Parra kind of scrambled for that one in center field. Sosa's next up, 1-4 one at the single. Sammy Sosa, as you can guess, decently high strikeout rate, but he had a 390, 60 of 134, 13 of those hits home runs, and has nearly by far the most RBIs of all the pros with 48. Mark McGuire. Second best with 41. And Sosa misses that one. Count one and two for Sosa. And that one's going away. In the next inning, top of the fifth, we're going to go to Cement Gardens, transition into game two of the triple header as that's another ball. 14th pitch of the inning for Johnson. This one's a slow ball and it's hit huge to left field. He just left it over the plate and Sammy Zosa with the home run and the Diamondbacks. We'll take the lead. 377 feet, a really slow, slow ball there. Not well placed by Randy Johnson. And despite the White Sox great start, the Diamondbacks will take the lead. Mikey gets in there and so does so, so the lead has been switched over. The stats actually count, that'll be uh, RBI 50 for uh, Sammy Sosa there. Larkin comes up, got a lead change here, Diamondbacks lead, 2-1, to one. as Johnson, again he had 24 pitches in the first three innings, this is his 16th of this inning, as he puts that one right down the middle of his slow ball, but this time Larkin not able to hit it. Or make contact. A bit right this one, ball two. Could be a good turnaround opportunity now for the Diamondbacks and maybe Angela. As we go into the bottom of the fourth. Whenever that'll be, that'll be a foul. Down a left hook and another ball. Bowling for dollars. It's now the twentieth pitch of the inning for Johnson. From the wind up fire. It's a left hook and now one a late swing strike. Third strikeout for Johnson. And I believe that's his first strikeout of someone not named Vicky in this game. Joe, 
Next up, Chipper Jones. He comes up. One point with the single. It's a switch hitter, but mainly... Bats left. You call that a strike? Count one and one for Jones. Takes the stretch. The one one pick. Then flinch with that one. So now Randy Johnson. Like I've said a few times in this inning. This is his 24th pitch of the inning. He had 24 in the first three. Already matching that one, but this may end the inning. If ideal, nope. This one hit Ashley to first, and that ends the top half of the fourth. Ashley's sister, Sydney, comes up bat, Ripken Jr. on deck. Johnson the hole. This one a grounder. Angela should make the play, and she does, just barely. Jacinda got off the plate and got back just in time to make the physical tag. Ribkin Jr., he's next up, he's 0 for 1. Could this be redemption for Angela? Here's a pop fly in the infield, Jacinda will do it by herself, unassisted, second down. Will this be a 1-2-3? The this one is hit. Not badly in the center field. Oh, Burnitz dives for it. And Johnson will get the single. Here comes Ashley Weber. Ashley's next up. Uh, she is one for one at the single. Fireball. Ashley was going to swing at that as she changed stances, but didn't happen. One more strike will end the inning. And I only swing strike as Ashley will strike out. Still close, two to one. The oh, the major there you go. White Sox once had a midget play for them. He only had one at bat and he walked. Turns out the pitchers couldn't find his strike zone. Lisa Crockett, ready for the pitch. Oh, he's got a pause the Vinny Gooch story right there. Uh Game two right now is underway. It's we're gonna switch. The stretch, pitch on the way. I suppose after the first out here, even though I'm not too sure we're gonna expect much out of uh Lisa. But see Barry Larkin is at bat. Markey is pitching for the uh, Astros there. Count one and one. We'll switch over in a couple. And granted that this game is still close at about the seventh or eighth inning, we'll come back to it for its conclusion. Johnson. Strike two. Now give us another one, baby. The pitch counts of Johnson and Angela have synchronized, surprisingly, as that's a strike three. And he has banned the batter. And another one bites the dust. Another day, another game. Jacinda now comes up 0 for 1, but we will now send it to Cement Gardens for game two of the doubleheader. As we see, we'll still see the uh, Sandy Flats game at the bottom left of the screen. 
can't see Mitt uh, much, obviously, but it is something. As Vaughn, Mo Vaughn, comes up, he is... Had a 340, 51 of 150, nine of those are home runs. Markey is pitching, he already struck out the first batter, which was Barry Larkin. Cement Gardens, an open left field where if the ball gets lost there, it can be a real issue. As Vaughn strikes out. You got, if you're a sniper, uh, center field, open dumpster, hit a home run by getting the ball under there. Also the, fe uh, the fence in center field as well. Right field though is just a wall. Of a building. Kurt Schilling, one of the best pitchers, rivaling Randy Johnson. Orange background, but no stat changes, so that'll be interesting. Maybe for batting, maybe. Cordova hits a big one to left. Jorge caught it. Another orange background, Kenny Lofton, playing center field. Let's take a look at his. His stats are unchanged. And Lofton fouling that one off. Spend the guards also a very bouncy surface, so ground balls have the potential to get into the outfield pretty quickly if they're not put under control. And a way early swing, strike three. Three pitch strikeout for Kurt Schilling, as we'll see Mikey in this game as well. Two outs already for the Astros. And we'll see if Schilling can have a first inning like we saw Randy Johnson have. As Mikey missed all of that one. He had contact there, but it bounced to the back for a foul. Strike two. And this one, well hit. Jorge's gonna get more action. This one hits the dumpster. Jorge gets it to Larkin. And assuming he doesn't get off, it's a single. For Mikey, it is. Next up is Larry Walker. Playing his normal right field. The Sandy Flats game is still 2-1. That's the bottom of the fifth. It's underway there. Count on the one to Walker. This one a heat and a grounder. Straight, well, to Schilling, but didn't matter. Larkin runs to second and ends the, the uh, first inning. Guerrero at bats for the Fishes. Vlad Guerrero, he has got a blue background. Let's take a look to see what he's got. Well, his stats are unchanged, so. Oh, that's about. In the Sandy Flats game, Angela is now off the mound after four and two thirds innings, allowing one run. Started off pretty badly, but caught up. Now just for the win, as Markey, who had a really good first inning, now catching a 3-0 count. This one a right hook. This one grounded. And no one's on the base. Markey's going to have to pick this one up. And that's an infield double for Vlad Guerrero. 
And that's what we talk about, about the bounces in Cement Gardens. The ball can be pretty difficult to uh, uh, get, as, far, as well as multiple players looking to try to get it at the same time. Kendall going for a bunt there, doesn't get it. Jason Kendall, 58 of 139, hitting a 417. Six of those home runs, as he really wants the bunt right here. We also see uh, Stephanie Morgan playing shortstop, which is her desired position. But we really only see that in backyard baseball, the original. With all these pros that can throw. Count two and two. This one a ball three. Bowling for dollars. And the count is three and two. So Marky had a great first inning, but now still no outs as Kendall strikes out. Took six pitches, but Kendall with his first strike out of the game. Next up is Ricky. Baseball, not his forte. If this was a backyard soccer, we'd be thinking of something else. 24 of 114, hitting a 211. He does somehow, though, have three home runs. Don't ask me why. Marky to third. And Marky, uh, Mick, uh, Mikey to second, excuse me. And that's an out tag out by Stephanie. So Ricky does get the single on that one. As Kurt Schilling comes up. Schilling a bit similar to Randy Johnson in the way that he's got some power. But it's more rarely seen. And whenever he tries to go for power, it's usually a looming dead grounder in front of the plate, which that was ball one. It's been is a bit comedic to look at when you look at it, honestly. Count one and one. The swing this one, and he swung early. And Ricky steals second. A lot of backyard kids who are not very good hitters are pretty good running, at running, so... That's why the Vickies and the Rickies are really tough to get out once they're on base. As Kurt Schilling will strike out. Stephanie at bat, Marky on deck, Tony in the hole for the bottom of the second inning. Scoreless in the second inning. This one a pale grounder. Larkin to first. Vaughn's got it. It's the first down. Next up is Marky. Is a foul. Marky, 27 of 146, hit just a 185, and somehow had two home runs, but not much to say about him as far as batting. He's a really good pitcher, and had set the record. Whatever it is, 13 inning shutout. Faced 43 batters. They don't have 12 hits, by the way. Routine grounder Maria gets it to Vaughn for the easy out. Now we see Tony. Is a heat. Strike one. Bottom of the second, still scoreless. 
in Cement Gardens. This one hits to Maria. Another routine ground out and battle in the second. Jorge and Bat Maria with a blue background on deck and Annie in the hole. Jorge, he's got power. He has awful contact from seeing the square uh, glasses there. Spectacles. In the Sandy Flat scheme, the Diamondbacks have scored a third run. Mikey scored off of a crazy bunt by Barry Larkin. I think I felt the wind from that pitch all the way over here. That's three to one there. Second strike to Jorge. This is a grounder. Beltran. Oof. Beltran to first. Got him out. Maria is up. She has a blue background. She's made some pretty good plays though. So let's see what's up with her. Nothing. <laughs> I mean, this is a an odd uh, trend here. A lot of blue backgrounds and orange backgrounds in this game with no change of rating. Right now, the Sandy Flats uh, Sandy Flats game is breaking open. Uh, it's four to one now, as it's uh, five to one. Excuse me, as. Uh, Goes hit there the center field. They hit the score three in the sixth. As Maria hits a flood to right field off a spitball, Walker will get it, and Maria is going to conservatively stay at first. That is an offensive power up for the Fishes for hitting the spitball. Next up is Annie, who we missed her at bat in the first inning. She hits another and she uses it right away. Undergrounder into the cement. It goes in the left field! And the ball's gonna go straight in there. So, and they'll rule the ground rule double. A lot of times they delay depending on where the players are. But rightfully so, a ground rule double call there. As now we got runners in second and third. And there are runners at second and third. As uh, it's gonna count on one. It's a lark, and it's a really good pitch. Strike two. Another strike. Zero and two. The stretch and the offering. It's on a slow ball and a strike three. Another one down. So. It'll be likely we'll go back to the Sandy Flats game in the 8th inning, just to see if the White Sox can figure something out. They scored in the 1st inning and didn't score again, which is something that you really have seen a lot in Baker Baseball. A team come out of the gates with the momentum and have nothing after that. Mo Vaughn struck out in the 1st inning. And they use the undergrounder again. Maria's going home. It comes out at the right field. As that's going to be a two-run single for Vaughn off the power-up. So the Fishes now are on the board. All from the power-up. That would have been one pitch away from ending the top half. But all of a sudden, now it's a 2 nothing game as Guerrero... This one, a uh, grounder, Tony to second. Stephanie's got it for the auto out. And the Fishes take a 2 nothing lead. Sydney now comes up for the Astros. And a strike. The last game will be in the dirt yards. 
I'm getting thought that that game will start when this game gets the seventh inning, but we won't tune into that one until this game is over. So we'll see what happens as uh, Ash uh, Sydney strikes out. Adios, amigo. Carlos Beltran with a blue background, and we'll see what's up with him after Schilling gets the ball. Well, this time we see a difference. Carlos Beltran's batting down 5 to a 2, pitching 5 to a 4, fielding 8 to a 6, so not great for second base. Beltran already not really a great contact here anyway. He's 25 by 119, hitting a 210, and strikes out at over two and a half times a game. So not much done there. Pitching change in the Sandy Flats game. Randy Johnson done after six and a third. Ronnie's on plate now. Mo Vaughn will do it himself. This one a grounder. Maria, easy play. One, two, three. Again, Kendall at bat, Ricky on deck, shilling in the hole. For the fishes. Up to nothing. He's good for average. He's got a lot of speed out there on the base pads. With nobody out. Here's the motion. Pitch on the way. Marky, right hook. Uh, late swing strike. So Marky doing well with the strikeouts. He's struck out five batters, but the undergrounder uh, has been the difference so far. With Annie hitting the spitball. Vinny says, unleash the heat. Another right hook. And this one hit well. Lofton caught it. First out. Next up is Ricky. One for one with the strikeout. I would say in about five or to seven minutes, we'll switch back to the Sandy Flats game, as you can see there. Right. On the ball two, count two and one. Be unusual for Ricky to go two for two, but he's got the stance for it. And the ball three. Despite the wide strike zone. Marky and a bit of an issue. And a strike two. Got him with the left hook. And the count is three and two. Target goes up. The three two pitch. And that's a strikeout. Ricky caught looking. One another many times. And it's always a fierce fight. And that's his sixth strikeout in three and two thirds. Kurt Schilling comes up, he was one of Marky's six victims, and we'll see if that will continue From the wind -up, pitch on the way. as he throws a heat for a wall. Count 1-0 to Kurt Schilling. I could give him Schilling batting was 22 of 138, hit a 159. He is the only pro, not, as Mark unleashed the fireball there, but he was the only pro not to home run, and one of three or four, excuse me, not to hit a triple, 
Ugh. Two fireballs consecutively from Marky. This one not working, and this one not work. As Kurt Schilling will walk. You don't want to hit. You don't want to pitch two fireballs in the same at bat and walk a guy. That's just not gonna work. Jorge. Next up. And he hits a big one to right field. He is in line. Just a bit more he would have gotten in the window. Walker gets it. Throws to second. Beltran gonna throw to first. And he's got him. So Jorge is out. Loft in the bat. Mikey on deck. Walker on goal. But again, this time we're back in the eighth inning. In Sandy Flats. So we're gonna switch back to the Sandy Flats game to see the end of that one. The Spent Gardens game still will be in the bottom left if you can squint and see the score. Fishes lead the Astros top, bottom four rather, uh, two to nothing. Angela pop fly over the plate. It's caught. Mikey is next, one for two with a single. So the heat. <laughs> one was hit well, but well off to the left. Count on one. Ronnie, so far in relief for Angela, has not allowed a run. Angela again pitched four and two third. Ronnie, so far, has pitched two and two third. And only 15 pitches. My math's right four and two third plus two and two third is seven and a third. Where we are right now. And, the offering, oh, four. and as we praise him, Ronnie will allow the walk. Or, excuse me, Ronnie is in relief of Randy Johnson, not Angela. He's pitched one and one third. Johnson pitched one, uh, six and a third, excuse me. So it's a three of three, the home run and, the, and two singles. Uh, Sosa hit this one straight center. Gonzalez looking to get it before he gets past him. He got it. Throws to second. Mikey. Oh, Ashley missed the catch, but he uh, but she does get the ball back. As in Smith Gardens, Mikey just hit a home run. It said 730 feet, which is really weird. It did bounce, though, as Barry Larkin screaming line drive to right field. And if it just had more elevation, it would have gotten over the fallen tree. Ashley to second. Garcia Parra to third, and Ripken Jr. gets him out. Tony on deck, Gonzalez on... Uh, Tony at bat, Gonzalez on deck. Ronnie in the hole. Tony, so far, two for three, triple and single. With no outs, through the White Sox who come back, has to start right now. I don't know. This one's hit well. Burnett's though is in line. He's got it. I'm sending that ball on a one-way trip to Cooperstown. No one on. Gonzalez one for three with a double. So Mikey is the one who's pitched two and two-thirds so far. For Angela in relief. 
but still, only 24 pitches, not too bad. There's a slow ball, it is grounded to Larkin, and Larkin will get him at first. Next is Ronnie, he's 0 for 2 with a strikeout and a walk. So Ronnie's had everything in this one. A walk. A non-strikeout out and a strikeout, but still waiting for a hit, which the White Sox very badly need at this point, as they're down four without scoring since the first inning. This one pretty hittable, and this is a pop fly. Sosa looking at it. He's got it. That ends the 8th, as Jones is at bat, Lisa's on deck, Jocinda's in the hole. As expected, a pretty well-fielded game. Sandy Flats will assist with that. Not a lot of drop balls in this one. Or fielding mistakes, but... The Diamondbacks have just been the better team since the 3rd inning. Ronnie obviously is a pretty good pitcher. You need him to not mess this up for the chance the White Sox could score four in the bottom of the ninth, as that's a strike two. This would be a good time to cinch him with a hook or a crazy pitch. Count one and two for Jones. Another well-placed pitch by Ronnie for his second strikeout. Jones will likely end the game 2 for 4 with a couple singles. Next up is Lisa. She's 1 for 3 with a triple. There's a heat and a strike. Lisa, not very good at handling the heats. This one a left hook and a strike too. Good ending so far for Ronnie. Diamondbacks leading 5-1, to one, top of the ninth inning. Ronnie's got to get two more batters out before the White Sox try to get something going. That pitch was well out. There's a heat and a grounder behind for a foul. And strike three. Second out of the inning. Let's strike out number three for Ronnie Josinda. She never strikes out, but she is 0 for 3. Sandy Flat's not really a good ballpark for her because she has great contact, but doesn't have much power to go along with it. So ground outs are really the usual way of getting out for Jacinda, as Ashley will do that again for the fourth time. Jacinda ending 0 for 4, as now the White Sox have to find a way to get it going. Sydney at the bat, Ripken Jr. on deck, and Johnson in the hole. It is a favorable lineup. But, I mean, the problem with being down four runs and being optimistic is Sandy Flash is just not the field for it. And you see there, Larkin to first, first out. Ripken Jr. 0 for 3. Watch and learn, kid. 
Johnson's on deck. That basically means Rifkin Jr. has to get on base right here in some way. There is a heat. That one is a grounder to second. Angela. Nice throw. It's out number two. And now Johnson looking down this one at a game time of a little more than an hour. I want a foul. This one a heat and a strike. Neither relief pitcher so far has allowed a run. And with one more pitch, it'll end the game, and that does it. Johnson striking out, ending one for four. As Mikey will give Angela the win. Didn't look like it at the beginning, but the Diamondbacks win 5-1. The White Sox lose 1-5. If losing builds character, these kids are going to grow up to be pillars of society. Until next time, this is Sunny Day for Vinny the Gooch and the whole Backyard Gang. So long! So the Diamondbacks, they win it. 5-1 to one in Sandy Flats. The White Sox, as you can see... All they could do is score once in the first inning. After that, wasn't much to do. So that ends up from Sandy Flats. We will switch back to the backyard the base of uh, the, the game in the Cement Gardens. It has gone pretty well, close in the sixth inning. Two to two. The Dirt Yards game, the third game of the triple header, will start uh, once this game gets to the seventh. Although, with how early the Sandy Flats game ended, it may come earlier. We'll just we'll see about that. Marky so far pitched five and a third. Struck out seven in sixty-six pitches. That's a strike too. Um, I should have swung. Right. And the count is one and two. Into the motion. Here's the pitch. We want a batter. Ball two. It's been too long since that ump had his eyes checked. And the count is two and two. Count two and two for Ricky. This one is out of the strike zone. And now we got a full count. This one is hit. Marky to first. Got him. Second out. Kurt Schilling is next. 0 for 1. Strike out and walk. Pitch number 70 for Marky. Not a bad uh, pace right here. Count one, one, top six, Fish's Astros are still tied in Cement Gardens. Here's a grounder from Schilling. Mikey, uh, Marky rather, gets it to first for the easy out. That ends the top half of the sixth inning. Loft at bat. Mikey on deck, Larry Walker is in the hole. In the next half inning, we will see on the bottom, bottom right here screen, I guess we'll see, uh, the Dirt Yards game. The nine inning game, that'll be. Down a ball. Lofton has struck out twice in this game. That is two of Schilling's three in this one. 
Kurt Schilling, usually a strikeout artist in this in his pitching style, but tied game with just three strikeouts and just 51 pitches, and with just 48 coming into the inning, nearly 10 per inning. Can't argue with that either. Count two and two. This one well the strike zone for a ball. So a full count now for Lofton. And this one just barely in the strike zone and Lofton strikes out for the third time. As Mikey comes up now. He is two for two with a home run and a single. Shilling the pitch. Pop fly, Shilling. No, but Larkin's there to help him. Larry Walker is 0 for 2. A lot of good hitters in this game so far have not had good hitting games as Walker will pop this one into the infield and Larkin is there to catch it. Jorge bat Maria on deck, Annie's in the hole and the Dirt Yards game is going to be underway in just about a minute here. So Jorge is 0 for 2. The wind up, the delivery. Five ball one, one and zero. Come on, let's see what you got. Two bits, four bits, six bits, into the wind up. The delivery. A lot of really good hits in this game as well. That one's one. Lofton is in line, and he's got it. A few seemed like they'd hit the dumpster or get in the dumpster. Maria, two for two with a single. Maria, more of a single artist. 51 of 145, hitting a 352, 33 of her 51 hits. Singles, but seven home runs. Add two more singles to this one here. Down a strike. Off of. Hey, one out. Swing, why don't and the delivery. That is a ball as well. Count three and one now. Pull it together out there. And a foul, so a full count now again for Markey with one out. Let's see what happens here. This one is zigzag down the middle. Oxymoron to save, but Markey does get the strikeout, his eighth. And that is the first out of the game for Maria as she will hop skip away. Next up is Annie, who is two for three. With a double and a single, she's done pretty well in this one. Let's see what she does. That is a heat. And it's in between both bases, and she might get the single. She will. An infield single for her third hit of the game. Next up's Barry Larkin. Oh, look at this! The ball goes past Mikey, and it goes out of play. And it goes out of play. Runners take one base. That could have been epic. Well, we talked about arm strength. Uh, you know, we, we talked about arm strength in this one, and how not a lot of catchers, especially back at kid catchers, have good arm strength, but that one a bit too much. As the ball goes into the outfield, and out of play for two bases. Oh, 
ready now. The one, two, pitch. A swing. A strike three. So Larkin strikes out. He's one for four as we'll go to the bottom half of the seventh. Stephanie's at bat, Marky's on deck. Tony in the hole. Stephanie so far is 0 for two. Kurt Schilling just 57 pitches through six innings, but both starting pitchers obviously still out here. Watch it. Hey, batter, 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 on the next day, I was going to say her stats, but she'll be 0 for 3. This could be her last at bat, though. We'll see. In the ninth, if the Astros need a ninth. The game's tied. Markey is 0 for 2. Strike. One out to the Astros, bottom of the seventh. There's a line drive. It goes past Schilling into the center field. Jorge's throw is not going to get there, and Mike uh, Markey is able to get a pretty good hit for a single. So the game is already not scoreless in the third yards. It's one nothing Indians over the Red Sox right now. This game, though, is still tied with one on and one out to Tony, who is one for two with a triple. This one hit a little pitch, but Tony leaves it there. Heat strike two. One on one out. Fifth pitch of the at bat. That's a full count now. And that's an early swing strike. So Tony. Striking out, he is now one for three as Schilling gets his sixth strikeout in his 69th pitch. Up now is Sydney, who is off two with a strikeout. Swung at, but a ball. Or a foul, excuse me. Now in a heat for a strike. One more pitch. We'll get it to the eighth inning now. And that one's a ball. So now count two and two with two outs. Not much of a jam really for Schilling, but if there's anywhere to get on, it would be interesting. This one, a line drive, it's caught by Larkin to end the seventh. Vaughn at bat, Guerrero on deck, Kendall in the hole. Both teams have scored in one single inning. Both pitchers have now pitched seven. Vaughn will go for his second hit. Not there with the strike. The Dirt Yards game still in the first inning. It is 1-0 Indians over the Red Sox. Jose Canseco is 
at bat with two on against Luan. And he just hit a home run, by the way. So the Red Sox are going to take a 3-1 lead as Vaughn will uh, hit a foul. Left hook, this one hit into left field. And what will they rule this? It'll go out of play. And they say it's a crown rule double. They are consistent with that, aren't they? Mikey got the home run with that. We saw two other balls go in there, and they ruled both a ground rule double. So one of the three times, I guess. He said, here's the pitch. Ball one. He really got up in the kitchen with that one. They have a runner on second. Nobody out. One will count. He winds. Cuts to the plate. Balls are. Low ball two. And the count is two and no. Oh. And now we're starting to be interesting right here. Count three and all for Guerrero, and there are no outs on the board. And there it is. It's a four pitch walk for Vlad Guerrero, as now it's 5 1 in the first inning. In the dirt yards, by the way, as Carlos Beltran had a home run. So that game's going to be out of reach, possibly. Grounder, Markey to third, Mikey to second! Oh! Beltran couldn't handle it. Oh, look at this! Oh, Carrero came off the second. So two chances for a double play there, both denied. As Ricky comes up, he is one for three. Loan is already off the mound in the dirt yards after one third of an inning. It's a very Larkin pitching. That's uh, interesting. Strike two to Ricky. Breathe from that one over here. An impressive Count 0-2 to Ricky, this one a good pitch, and Ricky couldn't reach out to get that one. So Ricky's now 1 for 4, which is a pretty good game for him, really. Markey with his 10th strikeout, as Schilling comes up again, he's 0 for 2 with the strikeout and the walk. A high spitball. That pitch got Markey into trouble early in the game. But he gets the past. Count on one. This one an elevator for a strike. That was Marcus' 100th pitch. One more would get him out, but doesn't. So two on, two out. Got Vlad Guerrero on second base. This another spitball. Marky trying to toy with Schilling a little bit. Don't see the need as Marky is going to come off after seven and two third hundred and two pitches, ten strikeouts. And he brings out the elevator, which is his pitch, and he's not able to get it. Full count to Schilling. He'll swing at it, and he missed. Schilling strikes out for the second time, but the Astros may be a bit uh, lackluster at left field. As Marky's gonna be there with low stamina and low speed, so that may be an exploit that the fishes are gonna wanna exploit in this one. Beltran comes up, he is one for two. Three half innings remaining in regulation, we are still tied. This one is spitball. Let's try. Look like a good pitch to me. Here's the pitch. And on a 
early swing strike as well. Count on two to Beltran. As he will foul that one off. We didn't look at the stats for the uh, Sandy Flats game, but we'll take a look at it uh, before the start of the bottom of the ninth. Just to see what happened stat-wise for all players as Beltran strikes out. He is one for three. Marty Cordova comes up. He is also 0 for three. But with no strikeouts. He is the leadoff hitter. Some well of a strike zone, but he swung at it and got contact. Marty Cordova. Decent batting average, 43-124. Hit a 3.47, eight home runs. Had a walk every three games, roughly. It's not bad as well. This will most definitely not be a walk. This one is hit to center field. Jorge goes up and catches it for the second out. Next up is Kenny Lofton. He's 0 for 3 with three strikeouts. Will something happen for Lofton? He is due for a hit. Orange background. Guy's got good power and he's got great running ability. Rivals Pete a little bit. And yet, still nothing to show for it. As he bunts and still can't get much out of that one. Chilling the pitch. And it's a strike. He swung at it. Now, one more would do it. There's a left hook. And that's a grounded foul behind. It'll take many bounces behind before it settles. Count one and two. And Lofton still hanging in right now. One more pitch will end the eighth inning. This one a really good pitch by Schilling, and he got him. Kenny Lofton, 0 for 4, all strikeouts. As we'll go to the ninth, tied at 2. Neither team has scored since the fifth inning. The Fishes have only scored in one inning. That was the third. Garcia is 0 for 3. Uh, Jorge Garcia is 0 for 3. This one is a slow ball, and he got him for a strike. Left hook, and this one's hit well. Lofton is there, and he's got it. A lot of these hits so far have looked a lot shallower than we've expected. No hit we've covered here has gotten to that uh, red fence in due center field. One though did hit the dumpster. This one is grounded into right and Walker can't handle it. And that's going to be Maria's third single of the game. And now we got danger here because Annie is three for four with a double and two singles. She's had a great game. Let's well, take a strike there. In my book, a solid left hook is the mark of a good pitcher. Annie has one of the better. Non strikeout out rates and out of the back of the kids. Pop fly and Beltran can't get it. But Cordova does get it the second for the out. So that's uh, Annie's fourth hit of the game, but Maria and Annie will just exchange places. This could be the fish's last chance here. 
I would ideally oh, no. try to give the Astros some uh, pressure here by scoring a run in the top nine, but so far, none of that, as that's a pop fly for a foul. Let that one go. Count on two. Now in a heat, this one is li line driven. Lofton doesn't get it, but he gets it right away. And Larkin gets a single. Next up, Mo Vaughn has had a good game. Two for four, double and single. What will the Astros do offensively here? They need an out. There's speed on the base paths. And Mo Vaughn already has had two hits, so... Surely he will try to get this one in play. There's a heat for a ball. Count one alone, two outs. For the fish is this one similarly placed pitch and the ball. Count two and one for Vaughn. He's ready now. A two one pitch. And this one's well out. You don't want bases loaded in this situation. Count three and one to Vaughn. He's gonna swing and he hits it. Vol uh, Walker there! He's got it! To end the top half. Crucial catch by Larry Walker. And now the Astros are in prime position for a walk-off. Mikey's at bat. Walker's on deck. Stephanie's in the hole. Mikey has hit the only home run in the game. It wasn't legitimate. But they ruled the home run. It did bounce once before leaving left field, but it was ruled a home run. And a miss for a strike. And the shame of it is that Kurt Schilling has pitched an excellent game. This one a grounder. Annie lost it to first and got him out. I'll take a look at the stats for this one. Kurt Schilling has just over half his stamina. Let's take a look. Let's look at it. Astros with five hits. Fishes have had 14. They've really dominated as far as putting the ball in play, but they haven't been able to really get across the plate. I mean, if you've got Annie with four hits, Maria has had three. 11 of the 14 hits. For the fishes have been singles in this one, but still nothing. Kurt Schilling has pitched a great game, eight and a third so far. Has only pitched 90 times, while Marky in seven and a third pitched 102. Marty Cordova, I mean, decent at best, but uh, the important thing is he didn't allow a run in his inning and two thirds of relief. So. Marquis in the hole after Stephanie, but presumably, obviously, want a hit by Larry Walker at this moment to set Stephanie up to at least do something before the uncertainty of having Marky come up, where he may have really not recovered quickly enough uh, from getting off the mound in the eighth inning to really make much of a uh, impact, especially with him not being a good base runner to begin with. And as ball three, Schilling has not walked a player so far. And he's on the brink of doing it here for the first time. Not yet. What is he waiting for? Swing! He comes center. Three one pitch. And there it is. Walker will walk in five. And now here comes Stephanie. I was going to say her stats last time. 
hitting a 387, 55 of 142 with 7 home runs. She has one of the better strikeout or non-strikeout rates out of the backer kids as well, despite the fact that she struck out uh, in her last at bat. And a drop. There's nobody on third base. Stephanie's out at second. But Walker does advance to third. So now Markey does have a single. He pitched a really good inning. Seven in the third. Now he has a chance to give the Astros a walk-off. Left hook. This one grounded into right field. Larkin, or Guerrero, excuse me, gets it to first base. Markey just not enough speed had he gotten to first base. That would have ended it. But doesn't have the speed, and now we're going to go into extra innings. Guerrero, one for three with the double. We are in extra action right here we are not going to go back to the dirt yards game well we haven't gone there to begin with but we are, we're not going to go to the dirt yards game until this game's conclusion so we'll take a look to see how far this can go will it only go 10 or or we go further. Still got plenty of time. The third yards game still has six left. Six innings left. After a crazy first and second inning, it's still five to one over there. This one is hit. Line drive in the right. Lofton to second, Beltran chasing him down, back to first, and Tony get the catch, and tags him out. Kendall one for four with the single. This one right over the plate, right hook. Four strike. Top of the tenth of the right hook. This one is a pop fly. Tony's the only one there, and he is going to miss, and then on the second attempt, get it. And he does the uh, Ahmed guitar riff. Ricky, one for four with a single. So far, nothing done by the fishes in the top half of this first extra inning. Count on one. This one all the strike zone. So of course, those that don't know baseball, if the Fishes score, the Astros have a chance to respond to try to extend the game or win the game. If the Fishes do not score, then the next score by the Astros would win if they were to score in the bottom of the 10th inning or the bottom of any inning. This one is a slow-mo. And he didn't hit it. Full count, and you don't want to walk Ricky at this point. You might as well just loft it in the middle of the plate, and he does. There's a right hook, though. Ricky strikes out. He's one for five. Tony at bat, Sydney on deck, Beltran in the hole. Not a very favorable lineup for the Astros here. The biggest hope of optimism is Tony. He does have a triple. And he fouls this one. So Kurt Schilling, had he lost 
from Marky's hit would have had a 97 pitch complete game loss. This one is hit and caught by Larkin. Barry Larkin not letting that ball get into the outfield. Sydney so far not much she's done in this one. 0 for 3 with a strikeout. Coming off the Weber twin loss with Tony against Angela in Sandy Flats. This one is a pale hit. Larkin again. Routine play. And next up is Carlos Beltran. So Beltran, he's one for three with the single. You better not walk me. So right now, the Fishes didn't do much anything in the top 10, and the Astros right now not looking very optimistic for the bottom 10, so we may well go to an 11th inning as Beltran gets the strike off of a, a foul ball. Count 1-1 one one for him. Left hook and a miss for a strike. And that one missed as well, so the top 10 is over, or the bottom 10 is over, as Beltran will go down to 1 for 4. Schilling at bat, Jorge on deck, Maria in the hole, they're going to have to clear the scoreboard for this one. Schilling 0 for 3 with 2 strikeouts and a walk. And that one missing the end of the bat. This one a pale hit. Cordova, or rather Beltran's gonna wait for it. And well, that was a bit ballsy, but it worked. Jorge comes up, he is 0 for 4. Though, again, despite that eyesight, he has not struck out in this one. Jorge, a bit late to give stats, 52 of 141, hitting a 369. Uh, surprisingly, his strikeout rate is not that high, just a bit over one a game, despite not having that much of a swing spot. Or a huge swing spot. But there's one. First time for everything. Jorge will strike out for the second out of the top 11. Maria right now looking to salvage the inning for the fishes. Annie is on deck. She has three hits. Annie has four. As that is hit, but it's fouled. Cordova's done pretty well in relief. He's pitched three and a third. He painted the corner with that one. One and one. Into the motion. The one-one pitch. This one a grounder straight to Cordova. Tony gets there and now. Cordova at bat, lofted on deck, Mikey in the hole, now in the bottom of the 11th inning. The Fish's offense, even playmaking offense, has just dwindled as the game's gone on. Kurt Schilling with 105 pitches so far after 10. In the Dirt Yards game, Ashley has pitched 3 and 2 third. She's pitched 60. But neither team has scored in that game since the first inning, so it's calmed down exponentially. Into the motion. Pitch on the way. 
Down a ball. Cordova's 0 for 4. He has yet to strike out in this one. But as we saw Jorge, he was also 0 for 4 and didn't strike out. Which is spitball for a ball. Left hook, Cordova. Great hit to center. Jorge can't get it, and it drops. Jorge throws. Maria has to get this one. Throws home. That's a triple for Cordova. And now the Astros have three chances to get Marty Cordova home, which would complete the walk-off. 0 for 4, all strikeouts for Kenny Lofton. There's a bunt, and it's going to stay in play, throwing home Kendall to third, and he's out. Cordova's out. But Lofton does get the infield double. Yeah, the placement of that bunt was not good. I mean, that that's not situation there where you would want to bunt, especially on the third baseline, because you don't want Marty Cordova in that situation to be enticed to get off the base. I mean, that helped the fishes there. You know, sure, Lofton got his first hit, and he's still a threat, because he's one of the fastest players in the league, but, you know, up to date. Even though this is a very good chance, that was their best chance of scoring a run. Count 0-2 to Mikey. Oh, and he strikes out. So Mikey, 2 for 5, as he had a chance and couldn't take it. It's been a really good batting lineup in this inning for the Astros here. Now they have Larry Walker, who has not hit. But... Again, like a good pitch to me. not to discredit Marty Cordova, but having him at third and Lofton at second, those situations are pretty similar, especially with how fast Kenny Lofton is. Count now 0-2. There'll be a wasted opportunity if they can't get anything here, and that it will be. Walker strikes out for the first time. Schilling with two in the inning. Eleven for him now as we finish the eleventh inning. Annie at bats. Larkin on deck. Ball in the hole. The game continues. Annie, so far the most accurate player in the game. Four for five. A double and three singles. This one is grounded to Stephanie, who will make the play at first. In the Dirt Yards game, Loan is back on the mound after pitching just one third of an inning. Four, uh, three and a third later, she'll take the thirteenth pitch. So we'll see how long she stays there, because usually second uh, appearances don't last long. But there's a ball too there for Larkin. That game is now going into inning number five, as this one had just entered in inning 12. This one is hit well to center, Lofton running to it, and got it for the second down. So, again, the Fish's offense dwindling as we continue with this game. They've not done much of, of anything uh, until now. 
There's a grounder to left field, and Marquis is going to have a hard time getting this one. Vaughn with the double. As we said before, left field is going to be a very uh, advantageous position for uh, the Fishes here. Here's a bunt. Cordova. Easy play, and that will end the top 12. Stephanie at bat, Marky on deck, Tony in the hole. Spitball hit over the plate. Kendall doesn't get it. It drops. Oh, but he. Th but Stephanie goes to second base and she's out. That would have been a power up if she stayed at first or gone to second. And she's now over five. So Schilling gets bailed out there hugely. As that would have been an offensive power up for the Astros, but instead, one out and back to the drawing board. It's a left hook and a strike. It's a really high one for the ball, too. Wild pitch there. But it ended up on the wild side. Count two and one for Markey as he floods it to center field. But Jorge is there for the catch and the second down. Tony's next. He's one for four with a triple. He has not hit since his first at bat, which seems like forever ago at this point. Tony with the elaborate swing there with the foul. And this one's hit well to center field. Jorge has had a lot of action, and he gets this one as well. That ends the 12th. Kendall at bat, Ricky on deck, Schilling in the hole. Not that advantageous of a lineup for the Fishes. As we start the top 13. How far is this going to go? Is the question. For those that wonder, the longest backyard baseball 2001 game was in Sandy Flats, uh, uh, part, excuse me, Playground Commons, as this one line driven into left, Stephanie to first, and Kendall gets the single. But it was a 20 inning game in Playground Commons. In 2016, we also saw a Playground Commons game go 15. As Kendall gets the steal to second base. They have a runner on second, no out. We saw the last time what happened when a player tried to steal third. The ball went into left field. Strike two. That was an Orioles uh, Braves game. That was a 7 6 win by the Orioles in 15. As Marty Cordova makes Ricky one for six. Kurt Schilling, 0 for 4, two strikeouts and a walk. Ever. We have not seen either team score since the fifth inning. It's been all defense in this one. 
This one a pale hit. Mikey got it. Tagged Kendall and gets Schilling out at first. Double play. And an offensive power up for the Astros. Sydney 0 for 4 with a strikeout. The Astros have an offensive power up off of the double play that Mikey pulled. And a strike. We don't know what the power up is. Problem is obviously, uh, the ideal way to use your power up is to have somebody already on base. But offense has really not been on the side of either team. So will we see that? And if the Astros don't use their power up, they may be in a weird situation in the 14th inning. If they hastily use it, that'll be bad too. Count two and one. Early swing strike. Left hook and a grounder to third. Annie, not in time. And that is Sydney's first hit of the game. Most times I'm really taking guesses on who, which Weber twin that is. Beltran, one for four with a single. So the Astros do have the player on base, but Carlos Beltran may not be the best player to use a power up as they give that a strike. Left hook and a swing to miss. Strike two. It's on a right hook. Screaming line drive to right field. Guerrero is going to get it. He throws the second. Beltran is out. And Sydney is at third. Call that a sacrifice power up. Now, here's the thing if the Astros still have the power up, if Cordova can get to first base and Sydney can get home, which by the time you get to first base, Sydney would get home. She would score and the game would be over. Target goes up and the delivery. Oh, ooh, that's a foul. But all the same, Cordova is in the close stance to try to get Sydney some space to go home. This one a right hook and a strike two. Kurt Schilling pitched 136. He's pitched 12 and a third. And there's a chance that the Fishes are going to lose from really no fault of his own. Strike three! Swinging! And Cordova gets the second out for the Astros. And now, with two outs in the bottom of the 13th, what'll we see? Kenny Lofton got his first hit of the game in the 10th or 11th but there was Cordova on third and he went out this one is hit but is it enough to hit the wall it is not and Guerrero saves the game and extends it. Just as Sydney got home, but the ball had to drop anyway. Both teams making defensive plays to extend this game. When will we see a strike of offense as we see a strike there? Top 14 now. 
Jorge 0 for 5 with a strikeout. He hadn't struck out until his last at bat. This one is hit well. Stephanie bends down to get that first out. Maria, 3 for 5 with 3 singles. And that's a strike. This one a pop fly for the plates. Sydney. No. Though Cordova throws the second. Beltran gonna chase back, throw the first. Out, Maria. Got greedy. Out number two. Seventh at bad cycle now for the fishes. They're four uh Annie's four for six. Double and three singles. This one a hard hitting rounder. That's a one, two, three. Nothing again for the fishes in that one. Mikey at bat, Walker on deck, Stephanie in the hole for the bottom of the fourteenth inning. The Dirt Yards game now is seven to one, Red Sox. Ashley is still on the mound after five and a third. And 85 pitches. As that corkscrew is a foul. Speaking of pitches, Kurt Schilling is on pitch 141. Strike two. With nobody out. Any more of this, and we, we may actually eclipse the two yards game as Mikey hits this one. Schilling couldn't handle it, but Larkin is there to save him. First out. Walker now 0 for 4, strike out in the walk. He is the only walk that Schilling has allowed. And this one is hit well, but Jorge, will it continue the streak? No! Jorge will pick it up and flub the throw! Larkin to third, triple for Larry Walker. And now this will be the third time that the Astros are going to have a runner on third in this extra inning period. Stephanie 0 for 5 with a strikeout. The Astros were in the same position in the 13th inning. Strike 1. This one's a spitball. Strike 2. And will this be a 1-2-3 strikeout for Schilling? And that's a ball. Count 1 and 2 for Stephanie. And she'll strike out. 0 for 6 for Stephanie now. Strikeout number 13 for Kurt Schilling, and next up is Markey. He's hit a couple of really good hits in the outfield, but they've both been caught. But all he's got to have is this one to drop. And that's a foul. Evidently, the Astros do not have their power up. Pitch 150 for Kurt Schilling, and that's a strike. Count 0 and 2. With two outs, Walker is on third. It's hits. Annie got it to extend it. Oh. 
This has been a really close game. Got there in stride. Fifteenth inning. We're into in cement gardens now. The Astros now 0 for 3. Inning wise, scoring when they have a runner on for a third in the extra inning period. The Dirt Yards game is going to approach the seventh inning now. It's seven to one Red Sox over the Indians. He may not even even get a chance to even uh, get into that game. And that's a strikeout. So out number one of the top of the fifteenth inning. Next up, Mo Vaughn, he's three for six with two doubles and a single. There have been 23 hits in the Dirt Yards game so far. That's a ball, count two and oh. To move on. Three for six, two doubles, and a single. This one hit well into due center. Lofton. Got it. Second out. Now Guerrero, one of two with. One of five, rather, with a uh, two. Uh, uh, a double. We're actually going to take a look at the Dirt Yards game just. For the looks here, so we can take a look. We'll go back in the bottom of the 15th, where if something happens in the Cement Gardens game, uh, which may happen, at, you know, at one transition. Annie strikes out. She's one for three in this game. Ashley has pitched six and a third. Her pitch count was really high early in this game, but as the game has settled down, and the Indians have just not really done much at all in this game. Pop Vicky, pop, ba pop fly, and Ashley has done everything defensively in this one. Uh, second out. So Loanne is one for three, and as we say that, we there's a single in the uh, Spen Gardens game. So as Ashley will pitch a foul to Loanne, we'll switch back to the Cement Gardens game. One on, two out. Kendall's two for six. Grounder. Cordova looking for Tony. And he got him. Got him out. That'll bring our team up to bat. Halfway through the inning now. Tony at bat. Sydney on deck. Beltran the hole. Again, not very advantageous to see an ending of an inning here. Or the ending of a game here. Let's take just more looks at the amount of uh, stats. See the Astros 50 at bats, the fish is at 57. Uh, the fishes are already on their seventh at bat cycle. As we continue this one, the Astros looking to get to their seventh at bat cycle, or at least really not wanting to, they want to finish this game. Kurt Schilling. 151 pitches in 15 innings as we continue. After Carlos Beltran, Marty Cordova would reset the line. Into the motion and the pitch. So obviously this is the longest game in Cement Gardens history. As Tony hits this one, it gets into left field. Larkin, and that's Tony's first hit since the second inning, if I'm not mistaken. Sydney is one for five with a single. This one is flubbed in the air. It is not caught! It goes in the center field! 
that went from a possible double play, and now Tony's going to third, and he's at third. That one looked like it was going to be a double play, and all of a sudden, for the fourth time in the extra inning period, the Astros are going to have a runner on third. But for the first time as well, there's a second player on base. Runners at the corners, no outs. You there, miss. Boy, what a game this has been. For a game where we have not seen scoring in ten innings. It has sure been crazy. The near misses and the near scores we've seen in this one. Strike two. They didn't swing at that. And the count is one and two. Easy out. Ready now. The one, two, pitch. Not a broken ladder. Strike three. Can't win them all. Beltran, one for six. Marty Cordova at bat. Marty Cordova now one for six. With a triple. I'm getting word we're actually gonna the, the dirt yards game is going to be paused at the end of the bottom of the seventh to avoid completely overlapping it to at least get two winnings to call two more outs and we'll be at that position Cordova's one for six with a triple ball just barely out Ball two. Kurt Schilling has pitched 162 times. Strike three! And now, the safety net again for the Astros is over. As they have two outs. Lofton, one for six with a double. You don't want me on those bases, man. Tony at third, Sydney at first, Lofton at the plate, and Kurt Schilling is finally done after 14 and two thirds innings, 164 pitches. He is done. What a stat line for him, facing over 50. Batters in this one. From the wind up, cuts to the plate. That'll be a legendary start as the slow mo comes right in. This one's another slow mo, and he doesn't swing at it, and the game will continue. For the fourth time, the Astros fail to score when they get a man on third. Ricky at bat, Schilling on deck, Jorge in the hole. Wow. The Dirt Yards game is one out away from being paused. And a uh, foul. Top of the 16th inning as Cordova pitches a ball off the zigzag. It's a slow ball, barely in the strike zone for a strike. Count one and two. Vinny the Gooch will always say when he thinks it's a good time to use the heat, will Cordova use the heat? No, he won't. He'll use a left hook. And a swing of his strikeout. That was pitch number 73 for Marty Cordova. Just to put it in perspective with how long this game has gone, Marky had a really good start. He pitched seven and a third. 
Cordova has pitched eight. He's pitched more than Markey as far as innings pitched. But Cordova has pitched 28 less times than Markey did. Also with four less strikeouts. So on a zigzag and a strike. The Dirt Yards game right now, Sally is uh, pitching and bases are loaded for the Red Sox. As Schilling strikes out for the third time. Second out of the inning. Jorge next up, he's 0 for 6 with a strikeout. Neither team has scored since the fifth inning. This one a strong grounder. Beltran got it. And that ends the top half of the 16th inning. Mikey at bat, Walker on deck, Stephanie in the hole. It's bizarre to say that the Astros as the home team at any point they score, they win. It's even more bizarre to say they have had a player on third in the extra inning period four times. The 10th to 15th is six innings. Four of those six, they've had a player on third base. As Mikey hits a big one, and no one is in center field. And that's going to be a ground rule double, as that'll go over the center field fence. So now the Astros yet again have a player in scoring position. Larry Walker, one for five with a triple. Vlad Guerrero is in relief of Kurt Schilling. And what's great is that Schilling has zero uh, Kurt Schilling has uh, zero uh, worry of getting the loss in this one. There's a bunt. Guerrero still got the arm strength. Walker is out. So the dirt yards game is being paused in the top of the eighth inning. We no longer see it on the screen. All of the focus is on this one. Stephanie is 0 for 6 with two strikeouts. She went out in her first three at-bats, struck out in her next two, and was out for her sixth. Left hook. This one is palely hits. To Larkin. Mikey is out, but Stephanie does get her first hit of the game. It only took 16 innings, as now Markey comes up. Markey is one for six with a single. And the ball. We are coming up on that historic game and playground commons played four years ago. That went 17. In one of those innings, uh, one of the teams scored in the top half, and the other responded. Uh, Stephanie tried to steal second and is out, and that's not good because Markey will come back for the 17th inning. Maria's at bat, Annie's on deck, Larkin's in the hole. Maria is three for six with three singles. She was three for her first four before her last two outs. This one a pop fly. Sydney 
doesn't get it. And that's a single for Maria, her fourth hit. This is now the eighth at bat cycle for the Fishes. They're four for seven, and he's four for seven with a double and three singles, but she was four for her first five. Maria will steal second successfully. And the Fish is now looking to be aggressive in this one in the top 17. This one of Bunts. Cordova to first. Safe! Annie with her fifth hit of the game. And now they're 2 1 with no out. And Cordova is in his first jam in a while. This one is a pop fly to shallow center. Will someone get it? No one will! It'll drop! Maria's gonna score! And it's gonna be. It's gonna stay in play! And it's gonna come off the dumpster. It's a three run inside the park home run for the fishes as neither Stephanie nor Kenny Lofton could get the ball and now the Fishes have scored for the first time in 14 innings since the third 5-2 Fishes just like that with no outs At this point, you thought it would go 20. With how much the Astros have missed their opportunities. But now, not only do they need a run, they'll need three. Pop fly, and now Stephanie and Mikey are going to run to each other. And neither will get that one either. Stephanie gets it and flubs the throw. Mikey, though, will get it. And that will go different than the last dad bet and out at thirds move on Vlad Guerrero two for six double and single and a foul top of the 17th inning the fishes have now blown open a lead off of a Barry Larkin three run inside the park home run the ball could not have bounced a better way literally it being cement gardens this one a grounder to second Stephanie will get it there if Tony has the confidence to stay on first base two outs Kendall two for seven with two singles So it's funny that we get the first backhead baseball game in three years. And we see a 17 inning juggernaut in this one. And there have been many games in backhead baseball 2001. Not many have been recorded in this fashion. This one hit to left field, Lofton there to catch it. And now, the Houston Astros are going to need three runs in the bottom of the 17th inning to extend the game. Gonna take a look at the stats for what may be the last time here after the first pitch. Which will be a strike. What are you waiting for? Oh and one. My coach calls time out. So Guerrero, about two thirds of his stamina. It is rare on the stat sheet to see a team end up with players with eight at bats. 
but four of the fishes have that. Vlad Guerrero would have had that if he hadn't walked earlier. All that, and if the game ends right here, the win would not go to Kurt Schelling. It would go to Vladimir Guerrero. Guerrero, though, has pitched really well. He is not a pitcher. He is not a good pitcher. He's not a bad pitcher either, but he's just not... doesn't nearly have the skill set there. Uh, spitball, ball two. And the Astros are really going to shoot themselves in the foot here. Especially looking back at all of the opportunities they had. Four different innings and extra innings with a runner on third. I think two others with a running with a runner on scoring position being on second base. Marquis is oh, oh look at this. He's off of first base. Vaughn to second. And Marquis out of second. Should have stayed at first. Two more outs will do it. To this marathon. Tony is two for six with a triple and a single. His first at bat was a hit. His last at bat was a hit. But will he make his seventh at bat a hit? Strike two. Count 0 and 2, one out. And a wide left hook. Okay, and Vlad Guerrero with the uh, blue background. None of his stats were changed. As Tony will strike out. And now it's looking even more bleak for the Astros. Is now Sydney is going to come up with two outs. She is two for six with two singles. Let us see what Sydney can do if she can extend this game anyway. Count 1 0 after a ball. Fishes are up 5 to 2 after scoring 3 in the top half of the 17th inning. This one just barely out of the strike zone as well. Four. A ball two. Ready now. The delivery. Ball three. Three and oh. Count three and oh. And a four pitch walk. Now that kid has moxie. Not enough yet. Well, Carlos Beltran is one for six with the single. I want to strike. Count 0 and 1. We've got two outs. Sidney Weber is on first base. Beltran has to get on base for anything to happen here. With that reduced batting rating. Which will make it even more difficult. Count one and two, Guerrero, this pitch in the strike zone, left hook, strike three, it's over. After 17, Guerrero getting the win after Schilling's huge outing, Beltran's one for seven, and the Fishers win, five to two. Astros today, two, five. When you win a game, it's easy to think of yourselves as winners. When you lose, though, no one should think of themselves as losers. Just winners who had an off day. Until next time, for Vinny the Gooch, this is Sunny Day. So long, sports fans! So that does it. Longest game in Cement Gardens history and, this, and tied for the second longest game in the history of Backyard Baseball. 2001, if you will. 17 innings, but the Fishes win it 5-3 to three after a Barry Larkin three-run inside the park home run. That scored Maria and Annie as well. So now we'll get to the Dirt Yards game that we have 
wanted to see for quite a while, depends on what your thought process is. Last game of the triple header, Ashley has pitched seven innings. That was her 100th pitch. The Mark McGuire, she has had really a stress free game from the beginning, almost. She allowed one run in the first inning, but the Red Sox responded by, well, five runs in the first, and Mark McGuire will give the Indians their first run since the first inning. As McGuire gets a home run. The Indians showing themselves having a pulse. 549 feet. 8 to 2, the score. Will we see a huge comeback out of the Indians? Either way, Ashley has pitched excellently as the game has gone on from the glimpses of the game that I've been able to see. Or we've been able to see here. Ten strikeouts. Walking two. Vlad Guerrero in this one too. One for with a single. This one is hit, pop fly, move on. Yes. First out. Ernie comes up, he's one for three with a single. First out in the eighth inning, a heat from Ashley is out. Red Sox with a comfortable 8-2 lead. And that fireball is out. She's pitched quite a bit of fireballs in this game and has still been around. In fact, she pitched a lot of them early in this game as she will ball three that slow-mo. So, two consecutive pitches, the complete opposite of each other. But... All the same, both balls. Oh, there's another fireball. Three straight power-ups pitched by Ashley. Count three and one. Ashley is still on the mound, though. This one a slow ball. Strike two. Will she come all the way back to strike Ernie out after a 3-0 count? Tried to outfox this hitter with an off-speed pitch. Count three and two to Ernie. This one another slow ball. It is grounded. Ashley, you can see the low stamina in her, and she will not get to this ball. And Ernie will get the single in the infield. Tony Gwynn comes up, he's two for two, double and single. He is much the Jocinda of the pros. He has the lowest strikeout rates in the league. 86% of his outs are not strikeouts, which Jocinda's 84%. That's a slow-mo. Ernie will steal successfully. Well, can the Indians find a way? And Ashley's done. Kind of a shame. Ashley put on a show. Very sloppy at the beginning, but she put on a show pitching later on. And now here's a crazy bunt. This will go quickly into right field. Jose Canseco will go for it. Ernie is going to round third. Vaughn throws home. It's not going to get there. Ernie will score. And uh, Gwynn is out of third, though. The Indians, though, making it more respectable. It's now a five run game. But they'll only have the ninth inning to try to come back if they don't get much more in this one. Count 1-0 for 
Larkin, who's played in all three games. This one is a regular bunt. Vaughn will make easy of this one. Top of the eighth is over. Indians score for the first time since the first inning. As the Red Sox are up eight to three. Really tear the height off the ball. Whamble. With nobody out. Watch out. It's the hit dog. Sally, since coming in, has had 15 pitches and two walks. Which means at least half of her pitches have been balled so far. But she'll usually stabilize and pitch pretty well. Two strikes to move on. Count 0 2. And strike three. So there is Sally's first strikeout of the game in relief. And next guy is Jose Canseco. He is a single away from the cycle. Usually, a player is a, a triple away from the cycle or a home run away from the cycle, but he is a single away from the cycle. This one hit well as it gets past Luan and she flubs the throw. So, now she's going to third. And this one is a triple. No cycle for Canseco, but that is his fourth extra base hit. Four for five he is now. Oh, Mondesi, three for four, two doubles and a single. Again, the Indians would rather not allow any runs here. They did cut the lead from 7 to 5, which is still quite sizable. And a lot of these batters have had pretty good showings today. Which makes it even more difficult. Count 2 and 1 for Mondesi. And a strike. I can't believe they didn't swing at that. Count two and two. And the throw. And that's a foul. Takes the stretch and the pitch. Swing and the swing and miss for an out. Is the second out for the Red Sox in the inning. Mondesi will likely finish three for five as Carlos Beltran comes up. He is two for four with a home run and a double. Seeing Carlos Beltran a home run is very rare, but he does have the orange background. We'll take a look at all of the background changes in the top ninth since we weren't able to really take a look. We only picked up on this game in the 8th. It's been a long 8th inning, but we basically were just able to see this game from afar. Though mainly its striking point was the first inning, and how crazy that was. With the Indians scoring first, but then the Red Sox coming back and scoring 5. This one, elevator for a ball. Coming up on what could be the last half inning of the game. Sally, the heat, this one is up in the air. And McGuire and Guerrero are going to go for this one. And it is caught by Guerrero to end the eighth. In foul territory. Ain't a bad Vicky on deck laying in the hole. Let's take a look at all of the rating changes first for the Indians in this one since Annie is coming up. Annie batting down from a 9 to a 4, running uh, from an 8 to a 6. Mark McGuire's fielding up from a 
7 to an 8. Barry Larkin batting 7 to a 5, running 9 to a 6, fielding 9 to an 8. And for the Red Sox, Beltran batting 5 to an 8, fielding 8 to a 10. Ashley, orange background as well, batting 5 to a 6, pitching 6 to a 7, fielding 3 to a 10. So, of course, she does not have to have Sydney on the team in order to have an orange background. It's just more consistent or predictable what she would get. Uh, Ashley, though, obviously is on pace to get the win. As she pitched a really good game, came off in the last inning 112 pitches and had 10 strikeouts. Top of the ninth inning. Three more outs to go until that'll end the triple header of Backyard Baseball 2001. The first one in quite a long time. And they strike to Annie. This one is hit and caught by Alex Gonzalez for the first out. Okay, that'll bring up Vicky Kawaguchi. One out. Vicky, the leadoff hitter for the Indians, has not let off very much except four outs. She is 0 for 4, two strikeouts. And this one. Good defense to get her out the other two times as well. Yeah, nice swing and a miss there. Two more outs until the end of the game, unless the Indians can pull off what would be a bona fide miracle because Vicky still has low stamina. Loanne, I believe, is recovered, but hasn't done very much or hasn't had the ability to do very much in this one after the uh, bad pitching start, allowing five and a third of an inning. This one is lofted behind for a foul. Down two and two. Vaughn looking to preserve the win for Ashley. And another foul. Count two and two. From the wind up, throws it. Heat and a grounder. A bouncing ball. Nobody on first base, but Vaughn is there. Oh, and the ball goes past him. And it goes out of play. Runners take one base. So Vicky will get her first hit of the game as Mo Vaughn not able to reach out for that Ashley throw. Loanne is next. Two for four. Two singles. Here's a heat and a bunt miss for strike. I think I felt the wind from that pitch all the way over here. Count on one. Into the motion. Here's the pitch. Strike two. Strike. Like this game. Got him with the heat. I think I felt the wind from that pitch all the way over here. They have a runner on second. One out. Here's the motion. Here's the pitch. It's a slow ball, and she swung at it for uh, out number two. Your table is waiting. Sit down. One more out to go. Sally's next up. One for four with a single. She's got the power, but the contact she does not. So we'll see what happens in this one. Swing and a miss for a strike. Two more to go. It'll end the Dirt Yards game. Of which was only featured for two innings because of the 17 inning Cement Gardens game. This one only swing strike. 
Great slow ball there by Mo Vaughn. And this might do it. Vaughn brings out the left hook, but not swung at for a ball. One on, two outs. Vicky's on second. This one in the strike zone. And it's hit. And it is caught. And that does it. Red Sox get the win. Mondesi with the catch. Eight to three over the Indians. Red Sox pull off another win. Eight three. What a game, folks. When things got rough out there, these kids hung in and kept playing their hardest. This victory is a well-deserved payoff for a job well done. For Vinny the Gooch, this is Sunny Day. Wishing you all peace, harmony, and great baseball. See you next time! So that does it for the Dirt Yards game. The Red Sox had it from the beginning. 8-3, to three, the final score. Ashley with the win. Loanne with the loss, obviously. As that does it for the triple header. Almost three hours of airtime here, mainly because the Dirt uh, the, uh, Cement Gardens game pushed back the ending of the Dirt Yards game. In the first game, if you forgot, the Diamondbacks, they won the game 5-1 to one over the White Sox. White Sox did not score past the first inning. They were the first team to score, and that was it from there. 5-1, to one. Angela. Did she have the one? I'm not sure. Either way, Angela and uh, Randy Johnson pitched really well. Angela, yes, did get the win. Randy Johnson got the loss. And the second game, the Fishes beat the Astros after 17 innings. The Astros had at least five different innings in extra innings where they had a runner in scoring position and four of those innings they had a runner on third and had one of those four times they had gotten a runner home. That would have been it, but with lots of regret of the Astros. They allow the Fishes to win after a three-run inside the park home run by Barry Larkin, which also scored Maria and Annie. So that'll do it. Back here at Baseball 2001 Triple Header. Hopefully, we'll see a little bit more games more often in the future. That'll be it. Signing off.